Number 53, titanium tetrachloride, which is TiCl4, has a melting point of negative 23.2 degrees Celsius and has a delta H fusion of 9.37 kilojoules per mole. Letter A, how much energy is required to melt 263.1 grams of TiCl4? Okay, so we're looking for how much energy is required to melt. So it seems that we're doing a phase change here. Melting is a phase change, and melting is always going from a solid to a liquid. And if I just put letter A, if we are going from a solid to a liquid, we always need to have our delta H of fusion value. Now, fusion is a fancy way for saying melting. So it kind of checks out that we're talking about melting. We want to melt this much of TiCl4, and they give us the fusion value. So 9.37 kilojoules per mole for uh, TiCl4. But now what, what formula do we use with phase changes, especially if we want to find out how, many ener how much energy there is? Well, the formula is this. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. It's Q, which is the amount of heat energy, but heat is a type of energy, equals N times the delta H of the fusion. So this is the enthalpy of fusion, which is basically just saying how much heat does it require to melt one mole of TiCl4. So we know this number already. This one is the 9.37 kilojoules per mole. But the thing is, is that what is the N value? Well, the N is the number of moles of the TiCl4. But they didn't give us moles. They gave us 263.1 grams. But that's okay. We know how to convert from 263.1 grams of TiCl4. And I want to go to the moles of TiCl4. Now, there's many ways of doing this, right? You could use your dimensional analysis and uh, times by a ratio, put the unit you don't want on the bottom. Or, since we're way beyond that, we could always know the little tricks. Now, just know that whenever you're going from grams of one substance to moles of, another of the same substance, you're always just going to divide by the molar mass. And the molar mass is found on the periodic table. So maybe I'll just say PT. So periodic table's out. We just have to look for what's going on with TI and CL, right? I have one TI, so on my periodic table, it's 47.87. And I'm going to add that to, I have four chlorines. So four times each chlorine on my periodic table is 35.45. And that is the molar mass. So I'm just going to divide by 189.67. If you want the unit, it's grams per mole. But I'll just take the 263.1 and divide it by that number. Just grab that number, less room for error, and press enter, and bada bing bada boom. Uh, we get 1.387. One? One? Moles of uh, the TiCl4. So 1.3871. Now we're ready to go. I guess we'll put it over here. Q equals N times the delta H. So we have 1.3871 times the fusion value, 9.37. Q equals, how much heat energy is that going to be? 1.3871. Actually, technically, we shouldn't really round here, so I'm just going to bring the whole number down. But chances are, if you just if you plug in this number or if you plug in the whole number, the answer is really not going to change much. Times the 9.37. Press enter, and you get 12.997. So 
So if we wanted to round to three sig figs, it would be 13.0, and that's in kilojoules. Just watch out. The delta H in this uh, equation was in kilojoules, so kilojoules have to come back out. And that is the energy required to melt 263.1 grams of the TiCl4. So letter A is done. Now, I just wanted to point out here that they gave you a melting point, but we didn't use it. Ah, they just tried to trick you. They can always give you extra information, but don't, don't, you know, don't tense up when you see that they gave you a number and you didn't add it in here. All right, sometimes they'll throw you in extra information. Just trust the process and trust the formulas. Yeah? All right. Letter B. Uh, for TiCl4, which will likely have the larger magnitude, the delta H of fusion or the delta H of vaporization? And explain your reasoning. Good question. So we just discussed that the delta H for fusion is always melting which means that you're always going from a solid to a liquid. On the flip side, your enthalpy of vaporization, which is your delta H vape, this is always, what do you think? If you're vaporizing something, you're turning it from a liquid into a gas. So, uh, actually, if I could just bring this up a little bit. Okay. And... If I just quickly draw three boxes, one, two, three, this will kind of give us an idea. Oh, what kind of box was that? They should technically be all the same box. Okay, good enough. So the first box is going to be my solid. My second box is going to be my liquid. And my third box is going to be my gas. And this is just a general representation of what solids and gases look like. Remember, solids, they are very, very, very close together, right? So they have a lot of intermolecular forces holding them together. Maybe I'll just do one row. And they don't move because those intermolecular forces are so strong. But as you melt and as you go from a solid to a liquid, keep in mind that this is your delta H fusion. All the energy that is required to take this structure, this like mesh-like mesh structure, and change it to, now they're just a little bit farther away. Some of them are still together, but you can clearly see that some of them are getting a little bit more farther away from each other. And they have movement, so I'll just put like a little bit of these lines on here. The lines represent that these are sliding and moving around. Um, but as you can see, the similarities between a solid and a liquid, they're pretty similar. But then once you get to your enthalpy required to vaporize, those molecules are all over the place. They're allowed to reach the top of the container. Keep in mind that solids and liquids don't just bounce up to the top. Gravity doesn't allow them to do that. But for liquids, they, uh, sorry, for gases, they're allowed to do whatever they want. They act independently, and these are moving so quickly. Big lines. Big lines for quick movement. So, as we can see here, just the energy needed to go from a solid to a liquid, eh, you're not really doing too much. So, my delta H, or the delta H of fusion for any substance, would always be less than the delta H for vaporization. Because look at the difference between a liquid to a gas. I mean, big difference. When you turn into a gas, you basically have no IMFs anymore, which is intermolecular forces. They are all acting as independent molecules, and they're bouncing off the ceiling, going from side to side. But in your liquids, they're held together because they still have intermolecular forces. So in this case, your delta H vape would be higher in magnitude. Magnitude is just a fancy way for saying number. 
So it would be higher in magnitude, it would be higher in number. And this is generally for all substances, that your vaporization, your enthalpy of vaporization would always be uh, much larger because you are overcoming all of your intermolecular forces. They're acting as independent molecules and they have no attraction towards the other molecules. So that's the reasoning behind that one. And you could also give the little picture as well. And letter B is done. And this question is done. What'd you think? I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. And I hope you're having a great day out there. Uh, keep studying hard. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for being part of this community. I mean, you guys rock. Uh, thank you for spreading the word. And, you know, we're, we're so glad that we can help you out, uh, you know, with your classes. We also have physics and math videos on the channel. So go check it out. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.